So my name is Mark Geary. Uh, I work for Arctic Wolf Networks. Uh, this morning we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of things. Um, when you start looking at cybersecurity, one of the most important things is understanding what you're up against and how the people that you're up against here in the world are getting into your environment. There's a lot of different ways that they're looking at doing that. Then we'll go into, once you understand what folks are doing out there to try to get into your environment, understanding how to create a security strategy to help you build layers of security to defend against that. And then we'll start talking about how you can monitor that to make sure that your environment is working okay. So starting off with how do people get into your environment? What I did was I took an example, and there's a lot of different ways to do this, but this is the cybersecurity kill chain as created by Lockheed Martin. Um, it's a thought process that a lot of bad actors you know, will use. Now it's not exclusive, everyone has their own method for using it, but the idea here is to understand a bit about the mind of a hacker, the mind of a person who's trying to social engineer your environment, the mind of a person who's trying to get information out of you, or just trying to wipe out all your data. There's a lot of different ways to do this, so it's not exclusive. But the concept here is we're going to start off with reconnaissance. So show of hands in the room, who has a LinkedIn profile? Okay. Who has a job title on their LinkedIn profile? Okay. Who's connected to the people they work with on their LinkedIn profile? Yeah, okay. So I'm a bad guy. I go scope out LinkedIn. I look at your environment. I look at your profile. I see you're the VP of IT. You're the CISO. You're the head of the CFO. You're the CEO. I'm building my profile of your company. This is what people do, by the way, all day, every day. I'm doing my reconnaissance. I'm understanding a bit about your environment. I'm doing my research. I haven't attacked you yet. I haven't gone after you. I haven't sent one email. I haven't tried to hack into your environment. The first thing I do is I figure out who you are. Otherwise, I can, I'm not going to have a personalized attack, but I've got to learn more about you. So after that, what do I do? I start figuring out, now that I know a bit about who you are, who your organization is, who the key players are in your environment, I'm trying to figure out a way to get into it, or multiple ways to get into it. So what does that mean? From an organization perspective, there's lots of ways to do this. Everything from creating my idea on phishing attacks, to looking at cell phones, if I can get my hands on cell phones, corporate emails. Once I understand who you are, I figure out the attack vectors I'm going to go ahead and try to weaponize. After I do that, I'm going to deliver this. Lots of ways to do delivery. So if you hand your business card out, it's got your cell phone on it. There's good and bad with everything. I have your cell phone, maybe I captured it off the web, I did a Google search for you, you post it on LinkedIn. Please tell me you didn't put your birthday. Anybody put their birthday here on LinkedIn? I'm just going to give you a free piece of advice, take it down. Right? You don't want that up there. You know why? I get a phone call if I figure out what company you work for, what credit card you have, and reset your passwords. I take educated guesses based off of your birthday. It's crazy, but people do that. So as I'm doing this, I'm like, that's a delivery mechanism, by the way, as an example of how I can go ahead and attack different type of attack, right? USB sticks, hacking, breaking through firewalls, there's a lot of ways to get in is the point of trying to get across here. There's not just one way. There are small things that everybody can do to help protect yourself. Take your birthday down off like this and have it up there, right? So now I'm going to exploit something. I got in, you clicked on an email, you clicked on a link, I was able to break in through your firewall. I was able to figure out who your CFO was and send them a text message, and they actually responded to it and transferred money to a gift card that got sent to Western Union. Why? I have no idea why somebody would do that today as well, but it happens every day, right? I can't tell you why people do it, but they do, right? So all of those are different ways to exploit the information that I got, because when I got your information off LinkedIn, I said, hi, this is Bob, I'm your CEO, I'm talking to a Jane, had a finance, and we had this conversation about you know this other company. How do I know this other company? Well, I saw on LinkedIn you guys were presenting at this company, and this is one of your customers, and you were there. In order to do this, I want to go ahead. I need to have some money to go ahead and buy some marketing materials for whatever it is. That took me 35 seconds to find that out. Right? Not a lot of effort. I shot the email off, and the worst thing that happens is you don't respond to it. If I do that 10,000 times in a day, you don't need somebody to respond to it. And somebody is going to go send that gift card over to Western Union so I can go ahead and get some money. <laughs> Every single day that happens. Every day. And that wasn't even technology related. That was me social engineering. But if I do get the technology wise, there's, there's other ways to do this. So let's say I get you to click on a link because I'm going to go out and sit here in New York City. We ran out of money. I need to put a gift card out. So I need you to send me a $100 gift card. It doesn't sound complicated. Click this link to go ahead and, and email me that link will walk me into a presentation in two hours. Somebody clicks on that link because it came from what looked like an authorized email. 
So now that I've done that leg, I download this little thing to my machine. It could be a big, it could be something inside of a Word document. It could be something inside of a, a, a PDF. It could be something that goes into your email. There's a lot of ways to get in. But once I'm in, that's a technical attack, I'm not going to want to have the ability to do remote access. And the whole key to taking over your network is remote access. Unless I just care about destroying all your data. In which case, I don't care about remote access because now I'm in. I'm just going to wipe everything out. But if I want money from you, if I want information from you, if I want to extract details out of your network, or I want to just lock up all your stuff with a cryptographic attack and hold you hostage, I have to be able to control it. Otherwise, how can I unlock it later on? How can I go ahead and move around inside your network? So this thought process is all about figuring out what I can get out of your environment. I'm building my attack vector. And now that I'm in, I'm going to do whatever it is that I want. I got my $5,000 in gift cards. I've taken over your network. I've got your email. So this thought process is to understand how the bad guys are thinking. Your next step is to figure out how to defend against it and how to get proactive about educating your employees to not do things like send a gift card to Wells Fargo or send a gift card. It's crazy, all this stuff. It happens every day, right? So when you start thinking about the attack vectors, then you can figure out how to build a security strategy. Right? If you don't take this kind of an approach, right, then you're just doing it blind. You're buying products or services or doing something without understanding why you're doing it and thinking about a process and a procedure to build a security strategy. Now, this is the NIST cybersecurity framework. Who's heard of this before in this room? Okay, is anybody using this actively to build a security strategy at all? Just a show of hands. Okay, a much smaller number of people. So whether it's the NIST cybersecurity framework or CIS or ISO 27001 or any other framework, whatever it is, right? Pick one or pick two. Start with one. Don't try to go more than one and boil the ocean. But start with a cybersecurity framework. So when you do that, right? This is put out by NIST, and what it does is it gives you general guidelines. The whole idea here is start with identifying what it is you're trying to do, move all the way through protecting, detecting, which is management, monitoring your environment watching to see what happens if something does happen, figuring out how you're going to respond, and on the right-hand side, then what comes next? How do you recover? How long is it going to take for your business to come back online, to bring things back in, in, in recovery? Are you going to have an insurance policy to help you pay out? There's a lot of steps that are involved in this. This is not just technology-related. This is business <coughs> process and technology working together. So you want to think about that from a business level and apply good technology to your process, whatever it is. So how do I do that? Great, I've heard this, this high theory. Give me some concrete things I can do. So you start with this. I now figured some things out. I've identified some threats. I buy some products. I go on, I set a password policy environment. My environment. I buy some firewalls. There's a lot of people here you can talk to. They'll sell you lots of gear, and they're all good things. Just make sure it's part of a strategy, and you understand what your strategy looks like. And you go off and you build your web filters, you secure your network, you start doing all of those things. That's wonderful. Those are great steps. And that's where most people stop. Here's what happens next. If I have all this stuff in place and I'm not monitoring it, I'm not watching it, I'm not seeing what's going on inside of it, understanding did somebody actually get through all of that, because as great as all those tools are, you have an encrypted environment, and then someone clicks on a link and downloads something to your machine, and that machine is authorized in your environment, it's gotten through. So it's not enough to just have tools. The tools are great and they're necessary, but you gotta do more. This is part of the strategy. You have to monitor it, and then if you wanna really continue down this path, right, the next step is build security into your design. As you start getting proactive in this, you wanna start designing security. So when you go to make that next set of purchases, when you go to the board of directors in your environment, and you're asking for funding, you're asking for funding for a plan for your infrastructure that includes security, not to add security onto your infrastructure. If you start doing it that way, you're gonna miss things. You wanna start designing security into your infrastructure. Most companies don't get there because it takes a lot of planning, a lot of forethought, but you start with a cybersecurity strategy and build that in. This is gonna take years, by the way. If you have just started today, so that you know, to set your level, this will take years because it'll be involved in your next generation infrastructure purchases. If that's okay, there are things you can start with today. So I'm going to just give you an example. Pick one out of this. 
So talk about monitoring, how you can add that in, and then how you can start building that in for the future into your infrastructure. So the whole idea with monitoring is to understand what's happening in your environment and to figure out if something has happened, can you get proactive to prevent a bad thing from happening again, or did somebody got through, what do you do to remediate it and to prevent it from happening in the future? That's really the concept here of monitoring with doing that. Now a security operations center is going to be the group of people, whether they're full-time employees in your company or you outsource it to a managed service provider that will do it for you. The security operations center is the group of people that will do this. However you do it, whether it's hiring your own people or hiring a service to do it for you, make sure that these people are dedicated full-time to this job. Do not have people that do this that also have other jobs. I'm going to ask another question. How many people here have a one security person or two security people on staff that also do other things? So okay, if you want to raise your hand, I, I have people kind of look at me going, I'm not going to raise their hand. That's okay, right? My point is not to embarrass anyone. My point is to get you to think about this, right? I want you to start thinking about that concept because if you have a security person, if you have two people, and they work Monday through Friday, eight to five, they take vacations, they get sick, they have a family, they have children, they have all that. How are you monitoring this 24-7, 365? You want to think through the answer to that question and make that a part of your security strategy. So the whole idea is that these guys don't sleep. They're always working. They're in different time zones. They're in Russia, in China, which, by the way, are 12 hours ahead of us or 14 hours ahead of us, depending on where you are in the world, nine hours ahead of us, right? You know, so to them, the middle of the day is the middle of our night. They're always doing these things. And they automate this stuff. So they're having machines always trying to attack you all the time. Machines are relentless. They work all the time. That's their job, both good and bad. So you want to make sure you're watching everything. The last thing you want to have to do is to make a decision that goes something like this. I'm only going to pay so much to monitor the critical parts of my environment because I have parts of my environment that are not critical. If you do that, the parts that are not critical will be an attack vector that are not protected. So when you go to monitor your environment, take a look at everything that you have, your switches, your firewalls, Endpoints. I just picked examples here. Don't get hung up on the particular examples. The idea is look at all of your infrastructure. And if you're in a hybrid mode, which most people are in today's world, using Office 365, don't forget about the cloud side of your infrastructure as well. You want to have a holistic view of everything. If you're only monitoring part of it, and somebody breaks into a quote non-critical piece, and that non-critical piece then goes, as an example, through a VPN connection to a critical piece. Well, guess what? Now you have a non-secured environment that somehow comes back into your security environment. <coughs> you want to take a holistic approach to security. The idea here is to watch everything to make sure that you have people that can do that. And that if you can't do that yourself, you might want to consider engaging somebody else that can do that for you. If you do do it yourself, there's a lot of folks involved in doing this. When you have these kinds of services, there's all kinds of things that you can catch. I'll give you an example, right? So, People will send emails all the time. We're talking about technical attacks and non-technical attacks. Those are I gave you a non-technical attack, right? I go through LinkedIn, I take a look at your environment, I figure out who your CFO is, your CEO is, all your executive officers, your directors, I look at your events that you guys are attending. Like for example, we're gonna post it right now, and we're on here, we'll post it afterwards, not while we're here, right? Um, but for example, I do all of that research. I then figure out your cell phone numbers because people post their cell phone numbers, not just LinkedIn, but other places as well. I then send certain key employees text messages. And I do this for about 500 companies. And my hit rate will probably be two of those companies will actually fall for it and respond to it. It's great. That's not really a technical attack. That's me on my cell phone or on a machine that's you know, faking my numbers, sending out text messages. If I go to the technology attack side, right, I'm sending emails to people. Right? And sooner or later, same kind of concept, 500, 1,000 emails, 2,000 emails, whatever it is, somebody's going to click on that email. Somebody's going to download something. And there's a million ways to get in and download something that does that. So if I'm not monitoring everything, right, what happens, here's what happens next. Somebody then clicks on that link. It goes to me, right? The real environment comes up. Right? They type in their password. Has this happened to anybody in the audience at all, any company at all? Anybody ever had this happen? So what happens? Somebody types in their password. The next thing that happens is that password then gets out for a while. Somebody uses that username and password to break into your environment. This is stuff we find all day, every day. So we're seeing this happen with our customers every day. Even if you have all the defenses, 
you're using the firewalls, you're using the E5 license and Office 365, you have the ATP secure threats and the secure links, and all of those services, things will always get through. So on top of having all of those services, make sure you monitor them. Those are real world examples, by the way. I won't give you the customer names. Those are real world examples of what we see all day, every day. So here's the next part of security. Now you're monitoring, right? It's not just enough to collect the logs. You want to make sure you ingest all your data, right? So take all that data and look at everything. After that, you want to make sure you parse through the data, okay? And once you've got your data and you're parsing it, the very next thing you want to do is analyze it. So you want to add on threat feeds. You want to add on geolocation information. You want to make sure you're looking at the most modern type of information that you have and the most up-to-date information so you're always seeing really up-to-date and a full view of your holistic environment. Now, one of the best ways, the most modern ways to do this is to have a combination of people and technology. When you do that, some people will tell you that everything's fully automated. Some people will tell you that they've got a lot of people. Either one of those approaches is going to miss things. Combining people and technology is the state of the art today as it exists. Here's a 10 second commercial on what we do. Right? At Architect Wolf Networks, we're an outsourced security operations center provider. That's our game. That's the only thing that we do. We monitor our customers' environments. We have a whole set of people that do this 24-7, 365. We have a whole set of technology. And people work with the technology together. That's how we combine things. And our pricing model is pretty straightforward. Go to the back of the room if you guys want to stop by and talk to us. And I appreciate your time. Thank you.